Okay, we're in section 23. This is a section on complex numbers. All right, we'll certainly go through a short lecture. Um, I do want to point out for students that need the additional support, there are these little mini videos. Hopefully that's clear. I know I don't always tell you about that, but I'm really hoping that's clear to you that there's, there's many ways to get support, including you may decide that you want to go to the internet, maybe Khan Academy or YouTube, whatever works for you. All right, the intent here is to learn the material. All right, so we'll talk about complex numbers and then we'll go through some simple examples. As we do the examples, hopefully it reinforces what we're talking about in, the, in, the, in, the, in these mini lectures. All right, so I'm gonna do another share with you. And again, I know this is tedious for some students. And let's talk about it, all right? So when I, when I go through this over here, I'm gonna say that there's a good chance you've seen these complex numbers before. All right, so what I'm gonna talk about, you know, if, if it's a complex number and I'll, I'll talk about, there's something in it that it's got a really bad name, but it's called an imaginary unit. And I'm gonna point this out in the lecture in the, uh, where it is in the notes. So there's this unit imaginary number, all right? So it's, it's kind of scary, but whoops, sorry about that. It's um, a unit imaginary number and it's represented by the letter I. Now in mathematics, the letter I is a reserved letter for the unit imaginary number. And the unit imaginary number is defined to be this over here, right? So I equals the square root of minus one. Well, if that's true, then what would I squared be? And I'll write this over here for you. So if I is equal to the square root of minus one, then I squared would equal minus one. I'm gonna put arrows in here indicating the direction you wanna go in, all right? So if you see the square root of minus one, you are to immediately write down I instead. That's the direction you want to go into. If you see I squared, you want to immediately write down minus one instead. All right. So here comes the claim. Every number now can be written as a complex number. Every number now can be written as a complex number. So how's a complex number written? As a linear combination of a real number, these are numbers we've been dealing with in the past, and an imaginary part. And that can be denoted by the letter Z. So we say Z is A plus BI with the understanding that A and B are the real numbers and I is the unit imaginary number, which is the square root of minus one. So every number now can be written like this, like this over here, all right? So now comes the problem, what do you wanna do with these things? We wanna write our numbers in that form, right? You're gonna be given some arithmetic problems that we want you to focus in on, all right? So I wanna do one thing at a time. I wanna talk about the square root of minus eight. Okay, now in the past we just said, oh, you can't do that. That's true, you really can't do that unless you have this new number system. So what you have to look out for, and I can't say this enough times, you gotta be on the constant lookout for this guy now, which is the square root of minus one. I see it, and I'll write this down for you. All right, so I definitely see that immediately, I see the minus one there, All right? What's that gonna be equal to? I. What's square root of eight? Well, we've done radicals before. I hope you realize square root of eight is really the root of four, root of two. What's square root of four, two? So I'll write this as two i root two. So the square root of minus eight is identical to two i root two. Let's look at the square root of minus 25 now. You must immediately look for this unit imaginary. I see it. What's the square root of minus one? I. What's greater 25 is five. Let's so write this as five I. All right, let me write this over here for you. Minus the square root of, I'm sorry, the square root of minus eight is gonna be zero plus two root two I. Now in WebAssign, they might ask you what the A is. The A in this case is zero and the B is two root two. Now, if you get the square root of minus 25, let's write this down. 
What does it turn out to be? Zero plus five I with the understanding the A is zero and the B is five. Remember, all numbers can be written as a linear combination, A plus B I. All right, let's go to another piece of arithmetic and we'll talk about it. And we're gonna talk about this piece of arithmetic over here. Two things to do. We got the square root of minus 25, which we just did, and the square root of minus eight. Now I realize somebody says, well, I don't wanna do what you're doing. I got some other way of doing this thing. No, you have to look for the unit imaginary. And what do I know about this? Well, we just did this, and this turned out to be 5i. And we did the other guy. What was that going to be? It was 2i root 2. We just did that. Now, my claim over here is you must do arithmetic. And looking at this, I want to point out what I'm seeing over here. I'm seeing a 5, and I'm seeing a 2. And what would that give me? Well, through a commutation and association, that would give me a 10. And what else do I see? An i times an i. What's an i times an i? i squared. And then I get root two. You should know that i squared is actually minus one. So what do you have here? Minus 10 root two. Check your key. You got it. All right, let's take a look at the other examples. And again, we're just going through it one step at a time. And it says, you know, basically, you know, operational complex numbers you know, simplifying them, adding them, subtracting them, multiplying and dividing. All right, let's look at simple examples first. So if you're asked to add the complex number three plus two i to the complex number seven minus three i, you should be able to do it. What are we gonna do? We're gonna add their real parts together. What's three plus seven? 10. And we're going to add their complex, their uh, imaginary parts together, which is two minus three i, which is just simply minus i. In WebAssign, they might ask you what the a is. In this case, the a is 10, and the b is actually minus one. All right, that's done. All right. You may also be asked to subtract. Subtraction matters the order. So let's write this down. If you're asked to subtract, 2 minus 7i from, five minus three i. Well, that's not too bad, right? So what do you get? Five minus two, which would be three. And then what are you gonna get? Minus three i minus a minus seven i is gonna be plus four i. What's the A? And again, WebAssign asks for this sometimes. Three, what's the B is four, all right? It's really simple, all right, really simple. Things are not changing, all right? Things are not changing. Go to the next page, multiplication, a little bit more aggravating, but we can still do it. And why can we do it? We know about the distributive property multiplication. So let's go through this example over here. I'll write it down for you. And the example is two minus three I, and three plus two i. I want to point out if you were doing this problem with different letters, if you, if you got two minus three x and three plus two x, you could do that, at least I hope you could. And what would you get two times three? Well, that would give you six plus four x minus nine x squared minus six, I'm sorry, I, I, I must be daydreaming. Minus nine X and then minus six X squared. What would that give you a six minus five X minus six X squared? Now I realize some students, I can do that in my head. Why would I write all that stuff down? You don't have to. I mean, two times three is six. Then you get four minus nine is minus five and you do get minus six X squared. You've done that in the past. So someone's gonna say, can I continue to do that? Of course you can. And that's what we want you to do. We want you to continue to do that. Whether you do it in your head or not, doesn't much matter. Let's do that over there. What do you get? Two times three is six. Doing the same thing, by the way, different letters, by the way. Two times two I is four I. And then you get minus three I times three is minus nine I. And then you get minus six I squared. Well, there's trouble now. I'll tell you what the trouble is. 
if you see I squared, you must recognize that as being minus one now. So I'll write that down for you. Well, I guess I could do the middle terms, right? And what would you get? Minus five I minus six times minus one. Well, what do you get over there? Six minus five I plus six, which gives me 12 minus five I. We'll check the key in a moment. What's the A? The A is 12. What's the B? The B is minus five. All right, let's take a look at our answer. Gee, we got it. 12 minus five I. I wanna tell you our goal of all the problems. Our goal of all problems is to identify the A and the B in the problem. What does that mean? All numbers now can be written as A plus BI. That might be a lot of work, but they all can be written that way. So then we get to this thing over here, where we have a division problem. Right, let's write this down. So what's the division gonna be? I'll just kind of pull it to the side. And I'm looking at it. And I realize what some students wanna do. They just wanna say, I, I'll just write down the A plus BI right away. You can't, it's not in that form. So if it's not in that form, what you have to do is you have to come up with the form. What's the form we're looking for? A plus BI. This is not written that form. So what we're gonna do over there is we're gonna multiply the bottom by its conjugate. It's gonna work. We'll do it one step at a time. What's the conjugate? Well, let's write this down. So A plus B has a conjugate. Right, what's a conjugate of this? It's conjugate is A minus B. Well, if I were to write down A minus B, it's conjugate is A plus B, right? Let me just make sure you understand the conjugate. All right, we're looking for conjugates. I'm gonna erase this. We've talked about conjugates in the past. We've seen those. We erase it over here. We would see it with the radical stuff, right? Not much difference there. So what's the conjugate of three plus two i? It would be three minus two i. Now remember this, if you multiply the bottom by three minus two i, you must multiply the top by three minus two i. Well, the top couldn't be easier. It's one times that, it's three minus two i. I'm gonna do the bottom, in time you'll get faster. We're doing this times this. What do you get? Three times three is nine. Three times minus two i is minus six i. Two i times three is six i. And two i times minus two i is minus four i squared. All right, it looks, it looks nightmares. I still don't have this. Let's keep going. Three minus two i. Well, in the bottom, what do you get? I want to point out what's nice about this. And this whole point of using a conjugate, these guys disappear. And what's this guy equal to? Well, if you look at it, it's minus four. I squared is minus one. So it would be plus four. And what's nine plus four? 13. By the way, it's still not in the proper form. I'm going to split it. It's going to be three thirteenths minus two thirteenths of an I. The A is three thirteenths and the B is minus two thirteenths. Again, web assign will often ask for that. Let's go back to our K, make sure we got the same answer. All right, we got it. Three thirteenths minus two thirteenths of an I, All right? We need to write our numbers in this form over here, A plus or minus a BI. All right, thank you. We'll do examples next.